Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Don Rose U.S. Commodities. Well, green on both the grain and livestock board this uh, Tuesday. And, John, we haven't seen that for a while, but let's pick this thing apart. Soybeans, third day up. Are we putting weather premium in? And how much more do you think we need to put in? Or how much higher do you think we can go here? Well, you know, I think that's right, Michelle. I think we're in a, a position now on the market that we've had enough uh, is enough to the downside. Producer has uh, moved uh, a lot of the old crop supplies that he wants, not real interested with uh, uh, selling new crop here well below insurance levels. So um, crop, I think if you look at it, uh, it's not the uh, the end of the growing season that a producer wanted here so far. So crop's probably getting a little smaller rather than bigger. So that's the first time since May that we've actually seen that. So uh, like you alluded to, trying to put some risk premium in the market. Uh, question is, how far can we go to the upside? You know, it's like a card game, Michelle. Um, we'll see if we get a bullish card come out and then see if, if we need to add a little more premium to it. If the producer sales, if the yields really do start to slip, does South America get into some problems? But round numbers to the upside are always a little bit of a rough one right now. $4 on D's corn, $10 on November soybeans. And of course, there's gaps well above the market that look like they're just too lofty. Uh, 1045 on beans and uh, 505 on D's corn. So, um, you know, it's work in progress for right now, but it feels like we got a lot of negativeness dialed in at the very least, uh, start to see if we can go sideways. Yeah. So corn and wheat, um, both making key reversals or scoring key reversals today after making new contract lows. So, you know, you said you think we have a lot of the bearishness factored in. Does that mean we can start bottoming those markets? Well, you know, I think if you look at it, the uh, oats market, we always say oats knows and the oats market since um, June 21st hasn't gone anywhere. It's been in about a 30 cent trading range, 303 to 333. Um, I think at the worst, I think that's what you're looking at on the uh, corn and soybeans, that we reach a fair market value. The end user wants to buy it on breaks. Um, maybe you see some uh, movement pick up on a little bit of a rally until we can get a solid catalyst to move us uh, sharply higher, or sharply lower from these levels. And, you know, you'd feel like um, that you're at the bottom 5% or for sure the lower 10% of the uh, range for the year on these grain markets. Um, you know, and you usually say if you're an end user, if you can buy stuff at those levels, that's not bad. Yeah. So we're into end of the month, end of the quarter, going into first notice day on corn and wheat. You know, how much of today's move was just technical? It was just funds covering some shorts and taking some profits. Well, I think a lot of that is, but I think at the other side of it, you know, we see end user buying in meal we in the uh, U.S. Uh, domestically. We see the end user trying to buy cash corn. We see the exporter buying soybeans and uh, corn down at these levels. And so I think that's all uh, a good sign. On a continuation chart, of course, you know, the, you have to be a little concerned because uh, September corn's gone to 360 and three quarters so far. So far, what we've done is when the one goes off the board, the next one up to bat, December wants to go down to those levels. So got to be careful. Same thing on wheat. It went down to like 493 on September. Uh, same thing on the soybeans uh, discount there, uh, September versus November. So um, that is probably the uh, caution sign. Um, but they can also be spike lows on these continuation charts, Michelle. So you got to look at both sides of it here and watch to see if the fundamentals can turn a little bit on us. Yeah. Well, and in years when we have big crops, record crops like we're going to have this year, sometimes we can put a harvest low in early, right? Oh, we definitely. I mean, the typical harvest low on soybeans is the first week of October, um, usually the second week of uh, November, third week of November. But we've had plenty of years, big crop years that we've been sinking down that uh, you put your low in in uh, September, you know, either the first week or uh, up to the third week of September. So it's very possible that uh, that's what is occurring right now. Just because we moved low enough, the producer's been selling aggressively on old crop stocks and probably has sold what he wants to on new crop. And uh, we're now going to look to South America here pretty quick as we're harvesting. Uh, the, we look at their planting season and it's a La Nina year, Michelle. And that means that Southern Brazil, Argentina have a chance to go drier. Um, we'll see if that develops. But you know, when uh, South America produces almost double the amount of soybeans that we do, uh, you have to really uh, pay attention to the big elephant in the room, and that's uh, the big producer of South America. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, more on that to come. Uh, we also are watching what the funds do. They're record short for this time of year in all of the grains. And so, 
in order to bottom the market is one thing, but in order to get a rally, we're going to need them to have some sort of a catalyst to keep covering shorts, aren't we? Yeah, we definitely do. And, you know, uh, usually the big catalyst is, you know, in the grain market, it's all about weather. I always say about 80 percent of these markets boil down eventually to weather. And, you know, so I think that's what we'll watch again. You look at the end of this growing season, um, you know, it might not finish as well as we think. I know we're pretty far along, but August is still a month on soybeans. You can get some small seeds. You can have a pot aboard. Uh, corn, you can get uh, corn that doesn't fill as well either. So um, not a good end to the growing season uh, yet, uh, the last uh, little bit here. And then uh, South America, we'll see if they turn dry so far. Uh, looks like there are some dry conditions developing down there also, Michelle. No doubt. So does that infer that maybe there might be a market rally coming up later in the season? And so should producers be storing, especially with the carry in the market like corn and wheat? Well, I think when you look at the corn carry, you break, you know, alluding to that um, corn between December and July, there's about a 36 cent corn carry. Um, you know, that gives you uh, interest on your money, plus uh, pays a little bit for your bin storage. So there's going to be no advantage for the producer to sell the upfront months. He's going to look at the carries in the market. Same, same with the merchandiser. Soybean, same thing. There's from November to July, same crop year. There's about 66, 67 cents. So you get a uh, return on your storage plus pay your interest bill. And I think that's what's going to be the uh, marketing choice when you look forward. Cattle market, uh, we built on the outside day higher yesterday with a higher close today. Do you think we can keep going here? Do we have enough technical momentum? You know, I think we do have some uh, good technical momentum, but, you know, it's this uh, it's going to boil down to the supplies aren't going to be there going forward. I think we know that we really haven't in my mind, started to build a cow here uh, yet. So, um, you know, that just continues to uh, be a slow go. But um, so the supplies are going to tighten as we go forward. It's going to be up to the demand. The demand's been pretty good. But, you know, the technicals, Michelle, um, positive to end, uh, to, to start this week uh, after a big $9 break. We're starting to push uh, up here. Discounts just got too big. Uh, cash market came down in chunks last week. Feels like it's uh, more stable this week. Uh, box beef's holding together good. And probably the big plus is Packers back making about $60 a head. So, you know, he's maybe willing to share a little bit more. But um, certainly feels like a market that that break, um, you know, we've had these big breaks before. And then we try to rally up and uh, close that uh, discount in the uh, futures versus the cash. No doubt. And of course, we've had, I think, four weeks of back to back lower cash trade. But with futures moving higher now, do you think cash has a possibility to turn back higher this week? Well, I think it's going to be uh, up to, uh, you know, looking forward, how aggressive the Packer wants to be, how well he thinks the beef's going to move uh, over this Labor Day weekend. Um, but, you know, then there's there's a, a market that, you know, usually we, we get a feeder cattle run right now, keeps a little pressure on the feeders. And then the uh, fat cattle is all up to, you know, how the uh, per, the uh, consumer uh, comes in and buys beef. So we'll see. I think the uh, I wouldn't be real overly negative on cattle with the discounts and the way the charts look, Michelle. Speaking of charts, hogs had a nice chart breakout last week. October hit two and a half month highs here today. Is that market getting pushed here just technically or is there some fundamental reasons why we're rallying? Well, I think if you look at the big picture, you know, one of the reasons that we came under so much pressure and the hogs, uh, you know, uh, is around the world, we came under pressure. China had a huge liquidation um, for all the reasons. Profitability just wasn't there. Uh, Chinese hogs are up like 40 percent this this year. Uh, they liquidated probably too low. Pork's their big choice of meat over there. So I think that's in the big picture. I think that's supportive. Our demand on pork has picked up. And seasonally, you know, we look at the cash market usually comes under pressure this time of year just because the weights uh, go up with the, the weather as cooler. Um, you know, the, the uh, supplies pick up just from the way the, the production is. But then uh, seasonally, technically, you're actually supposed to uh, see uh, buying come in uh, seasonally to the upside because we build too much discount in. So I think that's part of what's going on in the hog market. Technically looks solid right now. Fundamentally, probably can't get too carried away with it. Probably realistically, you're moving into risk management territory on the fall months, Michelle. Thanks so much, Don Rose, U.S. Commodities. That is Markets Now.